We're talking wheat now with our West District agronomist, Josh Bouchong. And, and Josh, we've gotten lots of good moisture lately, which has certainly been very welcome. Oh yes, the wheat's been hanging on, but this rain's definitely getting us in the right direction for spring green ups. In terms of the cold temperatures though, did the freeze have any impact on the crop? It did have some impact, is obviously below freezing for several hours, uh, well over 100 hours for some guys. So uh, we definitely had some leaf loss, but overall I think most of the tillers are still viable. Uh, especially guys that had some ground cover with the snow, that helped out some. But as we got southwest, obviously better ground there, but didn't get as cold southwest. Uh, but we definitely saw some uh, leaf tissue damage where we've kind of gone chlorotic in some fields. And so you might first initially think nitrogen or something like that, but definitely some of those leaves uh, got hit pretty hard. But like I said, all the tillers I've been looking at last week or two, uh, it's definitely uh, still a viable tiller, so we haven't really lost too much. In terms of the crop overall, how are things looking? I've been pretty satisfied with our stands. Uh, our early sown wheat uh, for wheat pasture for grazing and stuff is a little shaggy, a little uneven stands, but uh, definitely a good enough stand to start grazing. Some were a little grazed a little, a little sooner than we would like to see, but uh, they've been holding on pretty well. Our later sown wheat, typically for our grain only. Uh, the stands are there, maybe a little thinner than I'd like for some guys, uh, but definitely a good stand for most of them, at least a couple tillers on each plant. So I'm really liking the growth stage there. And so we're just waiting to take off. And then the really late sun stuff, uh, you know, November was very dry. Uh, so those stands are a little thinner behind our double crop acres. Uh, but overall, the stands are there. Uh, and we're getting pumped up for the spring. For sure. Um, and with, with sunny days like this, it'll start moving along quickly. Oh, you bet. Uh, we've had a lot of top dress going out with these little rain uh, chances we've had. Uh, there'll be more once we start to get the fields dried up again. Uh, but top dressing, like I said, there's some chlorotic weed out there. Got guys wanting to get some more nitrogen on. Some know that they need it. Uh, and some in trips we've been seeing, some we haven't. So we're using those tools as we need be. Uh, but overall, there's a crop worth taking care of out there right now. What are you seeing in terms of weeds? Uh, since a lot of us kind of drug our heels getting sown, uh, waiting for rains and start dusting in, uh, a lot of the weeds came up with the crops. So there's quite a few fields out there that are pretty shaggy with weeds. You can see just a straight green field in between the furrows, so we know that's not all wheat. Uh, getting out there, there's a lot of ryegrass, which is becoming more and more of an issue every year, uh, just because of the issues with resistance and a few options for herbicides there. But sheet's been another big issue, uh, and we've had some issues with the resistance with that in north central Oklahoma with the issues. And, but overall, there's a lot of mustards out there, some hen bit, and then all of our grassy, typical weeds, uh, they're there. So we need to get, get those managed pretty quickly as well. So guidance on weeds, and I know we have a new uh, weed scientist we'll yep. talk to uh, in a few weeks here on SUNUP, but guidance at this stage on weeds. So from now, uh, since we've got some warmer temperatures, we always like to time those herbicide applications when we have a warm period, ideally a week or more, you know, a few days before and after application. For one, to get the weeds growing, so we get the herbicide into the weed, but also for crop safety. Uh, the crop does have to metabolize it. Even products we've used for decades like Finesse, if we spray around a freeze event, uh, we can see some crop injury. But once we start warming up, we'll get those out. Some of our herbicides we need to get out pretty soon before jointing, uh, especially some of our newer traded wheats like the coax and wheat production system. We want those out there before we go reproductive at jointing. Uh, then even some of our group fours that we're mixing in there for broadleaf herbicide uh, control options, uh, our 24Ds, MCPAs, dicambas, we want those before jointing as well, uh, just for crop safety, but we want them after we're done tillering. So there's kind of a, a sweet spot in there. We might get some more tiller production this spring, but then we're gonna be hitting, you know, jointing really quick after that. So a very tight window uh, to get those applications on and then timing them around rainfall events. And uh, it's always a, a dance that we have to partake in so for sure and last but not least uh you know here here it is another month gone by and we'll be talking about first hollow stem soon yeah like i said the or a lot of our early sown wheat there's kind of a unevenness to it there's some older stuff and some newer stuff but overall if we're grazing real heavy it's been holding it down so when we start looking at the plants seeing if we're starting to hit that first joint uh that one and a half centimeters you know just over a dime Try to check areas outside the hot wire where the wheat's not really been held back from grazing. It'll give you a better idea where the wheat wants to be. Uh, so if we're grazing heavy, that's going to delay the wheat maturity. And so if we push that too far, we won't have that recovery period for the wheat to really make a grain crop. So 
we got guys still deciding whether they're going to graze out or they're going to pull off to go for a grain crop. Like I said, I'm pretty optimistic right now for a good grain year or grain year this year. Uh, so anytime we go past first haul stem, we're reducing that potential for uh, a grain crop. Um, some of us, you're looking at the insurance date in mid-March. Uh, we were usually hitting that uh, with the varieties we're growing now in February. So really uh, this month in February, we were needing to look out those fields. We got tools online like the Mesnet app, Frost Hall of STEM, where you can put in some variables like what maturities are. And we also have some other tools and some fact sheets to support uh, green ground cover. And so that's just going to tell you how much percentage of the ground is covered by green wheat. Uh, and we got some data uh, we can show as well how much green co ground cover uh, when we need, when we pull off the stalkers and how likely we are to uh, maintain that grain yield potential. Because if we're grazing it off, there's not much there. We need more rain and sunlight and growing conditions to recover. Uh, but if we do have excellent ground cover, say over 60% ground cover when we pull off, we're setting ourselves up for really good uh, grain crop. Okay, well, but, let's hope it's continued positive news throughout the rest of the growing season. Yep. Yeah. Josh, thanks for your time today. And for a link to those educational materials and apps that Josh mentioned, we have a link on our website, sunup.okstate.edu.